Hello. You may be wondering why I'm playing with my organ in a crowded church. Well, this is Games Master, television's only video game magazine show. Coming to you from the only church in the country where Harry Seacombe is too fat to fit through the door. But we'll begin tonight with our initial game playing challenge, and to detail it, I hand you over to the celestial godfather, the Games Master. Hello. How kind of you to join me once again. I have to admit to being rather pleased with the three little challenges I've managed to concoct for you this week. To tee us off, we take to the fairways and putting greens of top players golf. If you wish to complete my challenge successfully, you will need to play the first three holes of the country club course in level par. Best of luck. And attempting to keep his balls out of the bunker and in the holes in our first challenge is Mark Boduano. Now, Mark, I understand you're a bit of a mean golfer in real life. Well, that's right. I play uh, at Ross and Y Golf Club, and I have a handicap of four. All right. OK, now, how do you fancy your chances on the computer equivalent? Um, prefer to be doing the real thing, but uh, I'll give it a go. OK, if you'd like to get the feel of your clubs in a okay. hot seat, we'll get ready to tee off. And trying to keep me on the fairway is my own little handicap, Neil West from Sega Power. Welcome, Neil. Thanks very much, Dominic. Now, any general tips you can give Mark? Well, on the Neo Geo, um, yeah, the golf game's quite tricky. Um, basically, he's just got to make sure he stays on the fairway. That's the most important thing. And another little piece of advice is um, don't trust the caddy. Um, don't trust the caddy. They may look very, very pretty, but they often tell you completely the wrong thing. OK, then. Are you ready, Mark? Yeah. Then go to your caddy who's waiting for you at the first hole. OK, now on this first hole, he's obviously... What's he going to try and do with his first shot? OK, well, he's... First of all, he's, he's taking a wise precaution of having a look about the course before he starts, yeah? He's got to set himself up for his shots, and so he'll have worked out that, that he needs a shot onto the first fairway. Let's mm -hmm. see if he's course. made it. Thwacks that one. Oh, my dear, he's hooked that a little bit, but it's sneaked onto the fairway. Yeah. Onto the fairway. Well... Very risky shot, but it's paid off a bit. It has paid off indeed. He's now set up very nicely indeed. <laughs> OK, now we're coming up for the second stroke here. OK, he's, he's using a four iron, um, and he must... Right, this metre up here, he's gone for a 100% strength shot, which is quite risky, because he now runs the risk of either slicing oh, or hooking it. Oh, is it going to run out in the fair? Yeah. The green, yes, it's on the fair. Oh, no, it's got the foul. Oh, my word. Just slipped off <laughs> of the green there into the rough at the side. But nevertheless, quite a good stroke. Almost here. an excellent shot. Very, very good indeed. He's picked himself a sand wedge, a little chip oh, little shot. Delicate chip. Oh, it, my word, he was oh. nearly sunk at there. He's but he's doing... left on the green for his par putt. OK, he's got to get a par to stay in the running for the challenge. Green he's got a par right. each hole, so it looks like he's OK on this one, if he can just sink this putt. And, and yes. it's in there! He's done it. So now we're going on to the second hole. Quite a tricky, thin little hole, this one, Neil. Yeah, that's right. There's a couple of really nasty bunkers, and if he really takes a swipe and mucks it up, he's going to end up in the sea. He's picked himself a one wood, and off he goes. 100% whack. Oh, and he wallops and that it one. Looks and it... to be doing okay. What a nice stroke. Couldn't have been much better, could it? A lovely first stroke there from him. 213 yards. That really is a very good shot. OK, now he's going to whack it again there. Is he going to stay on? Oh, he may have just over tonight. He may well be going for the bunker here. It's just... Oh! Just on the rim of the bunker there, Neil. Very this, dangerous. This guy's got... ..luck on his side. Yeah, 90 yards. The sand wedge would actually do it, yeah? Or he's, he's going for a pitching wedge as it happens. He's Give him looking... a little bit more length. That's right, Very especially important. when you consider he's in the rough. Right. Nice oh. lofted club. Here we go, this one should sail straight up in the air. Yep, there it goes. Oh. You can follow the shadow on the ground. Right. And he... Oh, is it going to creep on the green just about? He might... Oh, no, he didn't make it. Oh. It's in the rough. That was bad luck. But again, that was only his third shot, and he's got another two to get it in. He's I mean, still on course. And to win the challenge, all he has to do is stay on par. That's right. Nice Most... little chip up. Oh, my word, it could be going in. Oh! <laughs> that was a beautiful little shot. And he should be set up here for the par, Neil. He should. If he misses this, he'll never forgive green himself. Slope. Uphill to the right. OK, look at the slope in the bottom left-hand corner. Right. You can see that the green's sloping from bottom left to top That's right. So a bit more power required. Bit more power. Oh, no, and he's missed Too it! Too much! Oh, my word! And it, now he's left himself a dreadful shot to try and get back. This is a very tough shot. Just a little bit too much power in this putter. Yeah. Beginning to feel the pressure, I think. So we really must... But he did it. Right! OK. 
Now it leaves it very interesting because he must have a birdie on this final hole, Neil. So he's really got to get on the green with this opening shot. He certainly has. And he's given it a thwack. Come on, he could be the Oh no, it's falling a bit short. Oh no, he's gonna go in the bunker. Now this is his last stroke, Neil. Basically, it's, he's gonna need a, need a miracle from this position. He certainly is. Um, it looks as if the only thing he'll come away with is a dinner date tonight. But... Okay. Oh, good. Oh, no. Oh, my word. It's gone towards... Is he oh, going to do it? Oh! <laughs> so that means that Mark has gone over par and his challenge has sadly ended in abject failure. Bad luck, Mark. You started off very well, parred the first hole, but then it seemed to be when you got into the green, your trouble started. The nearer you got to the hole, the more nervous you got. I really couldn't judge the pace of the greens at all, and uh, I've just messed up. <laughs> OK, well, we very much enjoyed having you on the show. Have you enjoyed it, Mark? Yes, thanks, Dominic. OK, a round of applause again for our Gallic contestant, Mark Bonuano! <laughs> and while Mark treads back to Ross on wife for a sad stroke or two on his own, we're going to cast our eyes over the latest reviews. This week, we take to our TARDISes and have a look at futuristic games. First up on the Amiga, fight through claustrophobic corridors of furious facehuggers in Alien Breed. The scenery is, is very detailed, um, a lot of interesting lighting effects, which work quite well. I enjoyed the game, but basically, it goes on the same like shooting the monsters. The same monsters appear all the time. Well, Alien Breed is very atmospheric, but if you're looking for an involved space adventure to blast away it for a while, you're going to be disappointed because it's the same a lot of the time. Get ready! Next up, forget fair play as the sport of the future comes to the Mega Drive in Speedball 2. It's basically like football with, with no rules. And the fact that you can beat the shit out of each other um, does make it far more entertaining than a straight football game. I think we can buy and transfer players is a really good idea so you can build your team up. I'd definitely recommend it. If you've got a Mega Drive and you've seen the Amiga version and interested in it, then you'll still find it a wholesome game that you can really get stuck into, even if there are a few presentation quirks that don't make it quite as good. Finally, on the PC, take to the stars for some aerial acrobatics in Wing Commander 2. It's a lot of flash presentation and a lot of attempt to create an atmosphere with the graphics. And the thing is, when you get down to it, the, the graphics is all there is. There's not a lot of depth to the gameplay at all. Looks all very nice, but incredibly boring to play. Very, very dull. And now for this week's feature. With a cornucopia of new consoles either having just been released or about to hit the scene, console buyers face greater choice than ever before. Over the next few weeks, we'll be finding out whether these machines are the ultimate in gaming fulfilment or simply all mouth and no trousers. Today, Paul Lakin, editor of GameZone magazine, casts his peepers at the Neo Geo. Most consoles claim to have arcade-style, arcade-quality graphics and sound. With the Neo Geo, you've actually got an arcade machine. If you possess your own Neo Geo, you can go and play the game in the arcade, save your game position on a credit card, take it home and continue playing at home. Quite why you'd want to do that, I don't know. The machine itself is very impressive. It's got over four, the capability to put over 4,000 colors on screen at one time, and its 24-bit processor is the most powerful available at the moment. If you're feeling rich, and you're feeling like the most powerful machine available, then the Neo Geo is the one to have, but it is a lot of money. of stonking games there. Now about this time every week I don't have fancy a celebrity challenge. Well this week is no different. To hear all about it, let's call up Games Master. Nice to see you again. I do hope you enjoyed my last little jaunt. For my second challenge this week, I thought we might take to the piece with Ski or Die, a most amusing little game in which carefree young stunt skiers, or hot doggers as I believe they're called, perform dazzling aerial acrobatics. You will have three jumps with which to impress the panel of six judges. Marks are awarded for speed, altitude, difficulty at manoeuvre, and grace. So come out spinning.